What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video and let me just say it's been a very long time since I've uploaded a video and what better than a Wacky West episode? It's been five months since the last episode and we'll get into why I haven't posted a Wacky West episode, just posted in general. But here we are at Castaway Cove where we picked up last time. We completely themed the queue line to Silver Bullet. And as you can see, there's some new attractions, there's some more theming, and there's just a lot more things going on around this area. I got to what I said I was going to do. Uh, I rethemed the entire food court, and we themed this queue line in the last episode, and this has such a long queue. I don't know why guests want to wait this long. The prestige on this ride is amazing. There's just a few bushes. And we completely themed these sides of these buildings. We made a hospital, we made a hotel, we made a barber shop. And here is the blacksmith where he works on the bullets. And as you can see, there's a new coaster. And that's like the shed. That's like the shop where he makes all of his contraptions. And this is a premier launch coaster, kind of like Full Throttle would be. Uh, and I thought that the white looked really cool. I'm just not I'm not being lazy by not changing the color But I'll give you guys an off-ride POV of that uh, in a bit because I actually really don't like the on-ride POV it, it just doesn't look right and uh, some of the elements don't feel right, but it is they look good And they, they just don't feel good when you're like watching a POV of it uh, But it, it does look really cool. It's just a simple out and back L-shaped layout And then this is the wooden coaster that we built a while back but this is a really small coaster but it's it's crazy it has one inversion two launches a vertical drop an overbank turn a helix I mean it's, it's pretty crazy everything that I was able to fit in this tiny amount of space but it's interesting because I don't I think this concept of a roller coaster is is quite interesting if you think about it I mean it's a single car and it's horrible on capacity so the lines always really really long but it, it was just meant to be like that family you know first inversion coaster for some reason it really reminds me of Manta at SeaWorld Antonio I believe just like that the swooping as turns and like the overbanks uh, and it, it has two launches it's not tire drive but anyway here we go this is the racing wooden coaster that we built the western standoff this is an amazing coaster one of my favorites I think we've ever built um, and if you want to watch us build this go back to episode 6 I believe we're now on episode 8 and it's crazy because today is the one year anniversary of Wacky West and I thought I'll bring you guys a uh, two episode we're gonna build a brand new roller coaster, and so this is the entire area at its fullest. Uh, it's pretty neat. There's nothing much to it. It's a completely themed area, and well, this is probably gonna be the end of the Wacky West series after these two episodes, and I'll get into why a little bit later. But like the main reason is there's just so much stuff that I want to do with this channel that I haven't been getting to do. Uh, as you can see, this is where you enter the silver bullet queue line and then you there's there's a really big tunnel actually uh, for the reverse launch and then there's the well the spike I guess you would call it but anyway back to what I was saying like the wacky west I completely did it wrong where there's too much on the ground like castaway cove is such an amazing area but there's too much on the ground that nobody goes up top anymore to the plateaus none of the queue lines are full and everybody goes right to those two wooden coasters and they go to silver bullet and they go to the new uh, premier launch coaster and there's nobody up top and so I completely did it wrong and I'm so far in already that like it it's just a little like discouraging because nobody rides it the parks losing money and honestly there's so much other stuff that I want to focus on on this channel that it's not on the top of my mind right now to do wacky west and like stuff like I did where what's next for Hershey Park uh, that's the type of stuff I'm gonna be focusing on with wacky west being a background series but this is the eighth episode no other series on my channel is this big if you think about it debunked is not this big music theory is not this big predict like any of the predictions so there's it just doesn't make any sense so I'm gonna completely finish the Wacky West, do voiceover, and then I'll give you guys the finale for Wacky West. But here you go, here is the premiere launched coaster. It's quite tiny, I honestly really like it. And it's so interesting how much I was able to fit 
Like I said, it doesn't look very big, but it, it does give off a, a pretty long ride, honestly. There's your vertical loop, quite tiny. It keeps the pacing pretty well through the ride. I don't know what the forces would feel like. I think the worst part about that coaster is probably the first element, the overbank turn. It was completely homemade and it was really, really sloppy. But yeah, and I do want to work on a new park, like I was saying, um, because Castaway Cove is themed so well and it's, it's consistent, and that's the type of stuff that I want to do. And the rest of Wacky West, like a year ago, like it's, it's inconsistent and it just doesn't look good. So I think I might just start from fresh. I don't know what park I'm going to do next. I don't know what I'm going to do, but this is like the type of stuff that I want to be doing down here on the actual grounds. And so yeah, here's this wooden coaster that Alex built, Alex and I both built in back in um, episode six. And you can see in the background the wind coaster we built. I think in episode two or three, that was one of the very first things we ever built. But yeah, today we are going to be building a B&M tire drive launch coaster, I believe. Um, so yeah. And I do want to get back to posting. I have not posted in so long, and this is the most real time it's going to get. This is probably going to be posted tomorrow. I'm speaking like in terms of now. I'm doing the voiceover before the day before it comes out. So yeah. So as you can see, we are in the episode finally six and a half minutes of me going on. Um, we are finally going to build this roller coaster and. I think it turns out pretty well, although a lot of these roller coasters you can only do so much, so they do get kind of repetitive. There is it's different than the the El Loco model that we built, but but it's just is is so similar to with like the style of elements, how it's all in tight spaces, and I do have some ideas for the Wacky West, but I just won't be building on them now. And it's been five months, so that just shows you that I, I just haven't had like a bunch of motivation to work on the wacky west and like i i just want to there's other stuff that I, I have prioritized on this channel before like wacky west and i think you guys have seen that and there's so many ideas and right now school comes first social life second then youtube so <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like a lose for you guys but like this is what i do in my free time this is kind of like just a hobby for me now and i definitely got to focus on school but if i had more free time I could probably post more consistently and I'm gonna try and upload now more every two weeks like I was doing and I think the schedule should work I have videos if I can get them edited in time I have videos we have videos I think we're scheduled until probably about April Alex and I've been working really 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 hard on covers top 10 videos music theories and just drum covers we have like four or five drum covers I think already uh, some of them are edited and Alex has been working really hard on some top 10 videos I've been teaching him the basics of editing so he can do that kind of stuff but yeah here we go so we got this swooping right hand drop or yeah it's a right hand drop off of the first plateau onto this tinier plateau and this coaster it's kind of like if Alan Shilke used the stuff that B&M did for, or if he used what RMC did and then put it into a B&M. I don't know what I was thinking. I just thought this is probably my favorite coaster type on Planet Coaster because you can do a launch, you can do a chain lift, you can do like a tire drive launch. There's just so many opportunities you can do with this and it's great capacity, has great elements too. And well, this coaster just ends up being really, really weird. And I overall, I do think I really like it, but it's just something that B&M would not do. If I had to compare it to anything, I probably would compare it to like Incredible Hawk, probably. Like, I, I don't even know how to describe what I'm about to build, but this will be spread out over the course of two episodes. So we're gonna, Kate, this was probably about a two hour build, I think. I did some other stuff other than the roller coaster, but uh, the roller coaster probably took me about 45 minutes. There was a lot of stuff that I cut out of this, and I was just trying to get everything right. But you guys do not have a long attention span, which is there's the true fans, and then there's the people who've never seen this series before, and they come in on like the fifth episode and have no idea what's going on. And 
like the attention span for like the wacky west series is crazy it's like 33 percent so like you guys only watch like so much of the video so i'm trying to make these shorter because the last few episodes have been 30 minutes and 26 minutes and like 37 minutes almost 40 minutes long and i know that's not going to keep your attention so what i'm doing here is i'm shortening these episodes to about 15 minutes each i think this one's around 16 minutes but it's it's just really short everything's sped up and this is definitely the way every roller coaster planet coaster video i'm going to be doing from now on it's going to be sped up in this fashion because i just i like talking to you guys real time except for live streams like i'll do live streams real time and you can see those so right here is where this coaster gets this RMC Intamin like Velocicoaster style feel. I think Velocicoaster is the coaster that I would put this this element, this this helix style thing going around here is it's gonna be a lot like like something you would see on like Velocicoaster, just like some Intamin, nothing that BM would ever do. And I think I would have to compare it to the the reverse Cobra roll on on the RMC at Six Flags Over Georgia, I can't think of the name right now. That's that's embarrassing. Pull a, pulling a, I can't even think of it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's also like the one element on the Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. It's like this this weird zero G roll that goes into this turn. You start out by doing this really really powerful and uh, I guess a little more drawn out outer bank turn and then it, it turns into this inversion and I think that this would be really really cool to see on like an actual coaster and I did screw it up but like if they actually built this I wonder how it would feel because you are you do have decent speed you're going like I think 50 55 something like that mid 50 mid 50 mile an hour range so I think that it would the feeling the forces I think it would be really neat and I think it would be really crazy to see but as you can see here I completely banked it wrong so it it's like the lagoon roll where you start to go through the inversion then you double back around so the banking's a little off in these drops but then you can see how it would kind of feel that's a sped up version and it was just a lot of trial and error doing everything over again because I wanted everything to be perfect for this ride I mean in the end it does have to compete with the western standoff which is probably <laughs> it would be the greatest wooden roller coaster of all time probably the greatest dueling wooden coaster it's the best coaster in the park right now let's just say that so in the end this has to compete with western standoff so I wanted everything to be perfect and it does get a really high rating at the end so now I'm using these really long track pieces because you do have a crazy amount of speed like the pacing on this ride it, it does keep it. it does not have a B&M feel at all and so like I wanted to I wanted to keep that in mind I wanted to make smaller tighter elements to like make a more intense roller coaster which is something that B&M doesn't ever do but you can see how that how that helix zero G roll type of thing would feel but now we have put in a vertical loop and so going back to planet coaster there are coasters that I'm building that uh, I'm going to do separately that aren't actually a part of series because I do just like building roller coasters. I have building the Monster B&M Hyper and I'm going to come out with a, a, its own premier launch roller coaster which is actually going to come out pretty soon. And I want to build a, another hyper coaster because I just think building hyper coasters in Planet Coaster are just so much fun. And I love building coasters by themselves in Planet Coasters. Like, I can't tell you how many parks where there's just one roller coaster. It, it's crazy. Like, I built the world's tallest roller coaster uh, in Planet Coaster. That one was pretty cool. That was a three part video. But anyway, you're going to go into this second launch right here. And I end up actually deleting this part because I didn't really like any of it. And this is where I make another cut because it was just, like I said, all trial and error. This ride needed to be perfect. It needed to have everything right so it could compete and it would draw people back up on top of the plateaus where we needed them to be. So instead of trying my own hand at a homemade turnaround, I ended up doing this like B&M style turnarounds like they have on their hypers, the hammerhead turnarounds. But at the top, I'm pretty sure you actually do invert. And then I wanted to do like a zero G roll, like the ones they have on the invert. So like, you know, it ha it's like that swooping zero G roll. And 
Planet Coaster just doesn't offer that. I mean, the RMC Zero G roll, the preset, it's nice and it works, but I ended up making a homemade one and it works out really, really well actually. I was super impressed, I was super proud of myself. But this is the end of the video, you guys. I can't believe it. 15 and a half minutes have already passed. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys do enjoy. Please tune in tomorrow for the second part to the Wacky West series. And here's a really sped up POV for you guys that this coaster is not going to look anything like that. But yeah.